Certainly a big advantage for Minnesota as far as the series is concerned. John Gutekunst is the head coach of the Minnesota Golden Gophers, the head coach of the Iowa State Cyclones, Jim Walden. Iowa State will kick off to start things off here. Taking a look at Jeff Shudak, who is an honorable mention All-American last year, first team All-Big Eight. He is an outstanding one. He had one extra point block last week. Back deep for Minnesota. Sean Lumpkin along with Chris Gators. You gotta look out for Gators, number two. He is a flag. Crowd on its feet as we get set to start here in Ames. Kicking with the wind, angling it for the far sideline. It hits on the goal line, and now Gators gets it and touches it back. So it'll be first and 20 for the Golden Gophers as they set on offense. The quarterback of the Golden Gophers in his second year with Minnesota, Scott Schaffner out of Westchester, Ohio. He also played at Moeller High School, that famous high school near Cincinnati. Scott Schaffner, the quarterback of the Golden Gophers. Last year, he completed about 56% of his passes, but his key thing today will try to be to get it in the hands of Daryl Thompson, their outstanding running back. First and 10 from the 20. Thompson with the ball, stopped in the backfield. Nice play by Iowa State's defense. Iowa State got in in a hurry, and Thompson was able to get about to the line of scrimmage. He might have picked up a yard. It's second and nine. Golden Gophers, again, with Daryl Thompson, one of the leading halfbacks in all the country. Also have to look out for number two, Chris Gators. He is an outstanding wide receiver. Schaffner on the rollout. He wants to throw it, and it goes out of bounds. Incomplete. It'll be third down and nine yards to go. Good defense for the Cyclones. Jeff Bauer was over there along with Marcus Robertson. The offensive line for the Golden Gophers anchored by Big Dan Limata, a 6'6 senior, 280 pounds. Chopper not making a very good throw that time, trying to get a little sprint out action. I think you'll see Minnesota during the course of the game attempt to move Schaffner out of the pocket so he can buy himself some time. They said they want to try to pass the ball more effectively this year. But we'll see if Minnesota in their first game is going to be able to do that. Third nine, the extra cornerback is in for Iowa State. Schaffner again, straight back. Now the pitch up. That goes nowhere, and Iowa State will go on offense. Dan, Don Edwards, who is there to make the stop, the senior out of Fort Lauderdale. Edwards, who had 10 tackles against Iowa, and coincidentally, Iowa State will take on the Hawkeyes next week here in Ames. Got a nice little safe pass, the shuttle pass. If Darrell Thompson doesn't hang on to that football, it goes as an incomplete pass. So certainly in the opening series, John, John Gutenkus very, very, very close to the vest. Brent Herbal with an average of about 39 yards per kick will boot it away. It's a high kick, and calling for the fair catch is Marcus Robertson. Robertson has it, and now the Cyclones go on offense, led by their quarterback, Brent Oberg. A senior out of Porterville Junior College, Oberg, had a pretty good week last week against Ohio. As he threw for 150 yards and a touchdown, he also scored a touchdown as well. The Cyclones have it at their own 41-yard line as they begin their drive. They're expecting around 45,000 here in Ames this afternoon for this one. This place holds about 50. In motion, that's Thibodeau. The give is to Brian. He stopped behind the line of scrimmage. Nice play defensively in there by Eddie Miles and also James Keene. Blaze Bryant, we've talked about him for the Iowa State offense. He is outstanding, as is Mike Bush, their tight end. Second and ten. Maybe a loss of one. Maybe we'll call it second and 11. Oberg with a pitch back to Bryant. Has some room around the right side. Picks up about four or five on the play up to the 45. 
It'll bring up a third down and six. Doug Evans came up from the strong safety position to make the stop. Offensively for Iowa State up front, a big front line anchored by Keith Sims, a 6'4 senior who weighs 300 pounds. And man, he's been all up and down that line. Started as a tackle, then a guard. Now he's found a home at center. Third and six with the ball at the 45. In motion goes Bryant. Across the middle, complete. Troy Moore with a catch. Nice slant play inside, and that picks up a first down inside Minnesota territory down to the 40-yard line. Fred Foggy came up from his left cornerback position to make the stop. Well-conceived play, as you saw. Blaze Bryant in motion, holding that cornerback. Of course, in that case, Iowa State with the option. And a good throw as they come out and get things going early. First and 10 from the 40 of Minnesota. Again in motion goes Bush. Comes over, checks up on the near side. Oberg was drilled, and so was Bryant. John Leverins, the middle linebacker, came up to make the stop. They try to draw play up the middle. Nothing doing there. Defensively for the Golden Gophers up front, Skeeter Ockrey is both the long and the lean of that defensive front line for the Minnesota Golden Gophers. Skeeter Ockrey, a 6'7", 226-pounder. Second and 10, ball still at the 40. back to throw. Lots of time. Unloads it over the middle again. Troy Moore with a reception. A first down at the 25-yard line. Leverins, a middle linebacker, had to make the stop. Got very good composure that time by Brett Oberg, and you've seen him on two throws have the ability to go from side to side. That's okay as long as you have good enough pass protection. And you'll see Oberg first look to the right, basically the same play that they were successful on first down the last time. Back to the left, Oberg stands in the pocket, gets it away right before he's hit. And the Cyclones rather impressive. Moving people all around, they're forcing Minnesota to adjust defensively, and they get the people they want to force by moving folks so much. Here comes Bryant on the pitch, stopped again behind the line of scrimmage. Eddie Miles again comes up from his defensive end position to make the stop. Bryant is finding the going very tough so far this afternoon against this Golden Gopher defense. The linebackers for Minnesota, again, John Leverance, absolutely outstanding. He uh, missed most of last, in fact, all of last year with a banged-up knee. He's back now, and they say he's 100%. A loss of one, second and 11. Straight up, the inside give was to Ryan Wilkinson. Again, there's not a lot of room to run inside. Mike Sunvold, the defensive tackle, making the stop for the Golden Gophers. Also, Eddie Miles in on another stop for Minnesota. You know, both teams very concerned, the head coaches, about their ability to stop the run. And so far, Iowa State in their first possession, moving the ball a little bit. But uh, Iowa State defensively, three and out with the Minnesota offense and uh, the Minnesota defense has played reasonably well against the rush. Dave, Iowa State has moved the ball, but through the air, not so much through the ground. Third down, 11 yards to go. Ball at the 26. Obert rolls out. Looking for the option. Oh, that's good. John Leverins came up again to make the stop. Big play for Leverins, and that will force Iowa State into trying for a field goal. We talked about him at the top of the telecast. All Big Eight, oh, excuse me, all Big Ten performer as a sophomore. And Leverins is a guy that his goal this year is to remain completely healthy. He's been banged up so much through the course of his career. Missed his freshman year with a broken thumb. I mean, linebackers have things like that happen because they're constantly trying to find somebody to hit. But Leverins, one of the outstanding linebackers in the country. 44-yard field goal attempt from Jeff Shudak. He was 10 of 11 from this range last year. It's up. It's good. to go in the first quarter. The Cyclones strike first. A 44-yard field goal from Jeff Shudak. His first field goal of 1989. 
kickoff with the wind at his back. It's not a very strong wind here at Iowa State today. Normally, the wind blows here at 25 to 30 miles per hour, but not today. A very pleasant day here in Ames. It might be warm down in the field day for the players themselves, but for the uh, fans in the stands, absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, and I don't think the heat will affect the players that much. I mean, of course, growing up here in Ames and up in the Twin Cities, they are used to very hot and humid weather. As you mentioned, it's really not that humid today, nor hot. Of course, we're not down there playing either. <laughs> Again, Gators is back deep. Waiting the kickoff by Jeff Shudak. Shudak last time kicked it right down to the goal line, and Gators was forced to down it. And this one's even deeper. That might go through the end zone. It does. No longer is that rule in college football where they used to bring it out to the 30-yard line on something like that. Now it's still out to the 20, and that's where Minnesota will start once again. Scott Schopner in his sophomore campaign. A little bit of heat last year. He started his last seven games as a freshman, made some freshman mistakes, but they expect big things, but they are weak at quarterback as far as their depth is concerned. Markel Fleetwood, really the only other quarterback they have in attendance this afternoon. And to give to Thompson, going around the near side, nothing doing. Don Edwards again there on the stop. Edwards with an outstanding play defensively, stopped him right at the line of scrimmage, no gain. It'll be second and 10 from the 20. When you have a back like Darrell Thompson, obviously the defense will key on what Thompson does. And I think before the afternoon is through, John Gutenkus is going to have to throw the ball a little bit on first down. They've been in a one-back system, and it's basically been Thompson to the right and left, with the exception of a couple throws. And Iowa State really looking for Thompson. There's Thompson again. A couple of yards on the left side. A whole host of uh, Iowa State Cyclones there. Larry Radigan came up from his linebacker position, along with Randy Byrne. Edwards again around the ball. A pickup of four, it'll be third down and six. We mentioned some NFL scouts think that young man right there, number 39, will be in the top five players picked in next year's NFL draft. Such a big, strong, and yet nimbly quick back. 220 and runs under 4-4 and a 40. 7.35 and the clock is ticking in the first quarter, third and six. position and snuff that one quickly. Well, third and six, you've got to be an overpowering offensive unit to run the ISO, even with a great back like Daryl Thompson. You see a lot of red jerseys. They're Shane to make the tackle. Minnesota being extremely conservative in the early going, and Iowa State really pumped up on defense. Again, Herbal will try to punt it away. A high snap. Good kick, though, into the wind. That sends Robertson way back to his own, and he's going to try to run it. He goes back to his own 35, trips up right there. Maybe a return of one. We're going to step aside with 6.48 left to go here in the first quarter. Iowa State leading 3 to nothing. Iowa State again comes on the attack with Brett Oberg leading the way for the Cyclones. Iowa State off to a 3 to nothing lead. It's kind of hard to get a handle on this game. You know, as you look through it, there's Oberg's numbers from a week ago. You look through all the statistics, you pile it up. Both teams have very small defensive lines, Dave, very big offensive lines. I think this is a pretty well-matched game. It, uh, the coaches were saying it really might come down to turnovers. About two good running backs, some outstanding players on defense, but as you said, not much size on either defensive line. You would think both offenses will try to establish the running game. Minnesota certainly has. Iowa State has tended to throw the ball a bit. In motion goes Bryant. Oberg wants to throw on first down. He does it across the middle to his tight end, Mike Bush. Bush stopped by Leverins. Also, Sean Lumpkin came up from his free safety position. That's going to be John Glotfeld, yeah. I believe, as he cuts inside. Minnesota in a, in a very basic zone defense. And again, Iowa State moving people around before the snap. And they're forcing Minnesota to make some adjustment, adjustments 
in the defensive secondary. When you do that, and maybe you don't get people to line up where they're accustomed to, you find some open receivers. And so far, Oberg's been right on the money. Yep, credit that catch to John Glotfelty, not Mike Bush, the tight end. Glotfelty coming in from his wide receiver position. First and 10, Bryant tries to go around the far side. Look at that cutback. He made a play there. He was stopped for a loss and picked up about three. Mike Sunvold finally made the stop. This is the kind of play that makes the difference between good backs and great backs. And I think you're going to see Blaze Bryant a lot this year. But great backs have the ability to make something out of nothing. Watch how quickly he can stop, get up inside, make a couple of yards where it looked like he was going to lose four or five. Second and eight. Ball just shy of the 50-yard line. Makes my feet hurt to watch cuts like that. <laughs> Bryant again, this time nothing doing. Ooh, he's smothered. In the backfield. Ron Getz, the linebacker, came up to stop him. Getz dropped for a loss of four. That'll bring up third down and 12 yards to go. Getz, a player that's played both linebacking positions, moved inside when Levers was hurt. Pretty good athlete. Minnesota's blessed with a fine linebacking core. We've talked a lot about Levers, but they're very deep at linebacker. 5.05 left to go, first quarter. Again, Bryant in motion. Oberg drops back, has time on the near side. Pass intended to Glockfeld for Glockfelty. Right there, though, defensively was Frank Jackson, so even if Glockfelty had held on, it wouldn't have gone for much. Not enough for the first down, certainly. So Judge Johnston will come into punt. Back to get it for Minnesota, and he's dangerous. Chris Gators, he ran back one from 79 yards, the longest in Minnesota history, so you got to look out. Johnston punting with the wind at his back, but look out, Iowa State, they've been known to run a few trick plays off of this. Not this time. Johnston with a high, booming kick with a win. That's going to go into the end zone. Into the end zone it goes. Ball at the 20-yard line when we come back with 449 left to go. In the first quarter, it's still Cyclones 3, Gophers nothing. Minnesota goes on offense. Ball again at their 20-yard line. They've started there three times in a row. Again to Thompson. Again hit behind the line of scrimmage. Mike Shane again coming up to make the stop. Dean Ollers was also in there, as was Travis Block. A loss of about a half a yard. We'll call it second and 10 again from the 20. And again on first down, it's, it's been Daryl Thompson. And I think if you're Iowa State defensively, you play that run until the Gophers show you the ability to at least attempt something else. Doesn't mean they have to complete a pass, but until they start to throw on first down, you can really play that run tough. Minnesota might be shy throwing into the wind. Again, the fake to Thompson. Schaffner wants to throw, has his target. Pass complete to Chris Gators. Nice catch and a nice throw by Schaffner. Same kind of action you saw in the first series. But they can just get outside and buy some time. And Gators and Tinglehoff actually in the same area. Tinglehoff falls down. But this is the kind of thing to get Minnesota going. You know, your first game of the season, you've got some jitters. You haven't played anybody. You want some success early. You're the Minnesota coaching staff, and that's been the first positive play they've had. First first down for the Golden Gophers. Across the middle, look at Gators with a grab. He might go all the way. No, he's hauled down. Marcus Robertson got him from behind, and now we have a flag. We've got helmets coming loose, the football coming loose. We've got guys trying to recover a helmet. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have an equipment check. And it's a terrific catch by Chris Gators. A pretty good throw by Schaffner up and over the linebackers. That's a terrific catch. Now, Gators is off to the races, and Marcus Robertson with one hand. Off comes the helmet, and away goes the ball. I believe Gators is going to be ruled down. That's great speed by Marcus Robertson. Robertson got a hold of the face mask. A five-yard penalty ruled inadvertent. They'll mark it now at the 13-yard line. It'll be first and 10 from the 13. What a catch by Gators. Boy, he does have blinding speed, and if not for the blinding speed of Robertson, that would have been six. 
And a pretty good throw by Schaffner again, up and over the linebacker on a seam pattern. You stretch that secondary and you force those linebackers to have a lot of depth. And because they've run the ball so many times, those linebackers have been playing close to the line. Iowa State has not allowed a touchdown in 1989, just allowing a field go to Ohio last week. Gives it Thompson nothing doing. Might have been a fumble. The they're attacking the ball. Thompson with a gain of maybe one. Matt Reberg and Mike Shane again there defensively for the Cyclone. And if John Goodenkoost wants to throw the ball, second down is the down to do it. Obviously, if they don't pick up yardage, third down, you almost have to throw it. So if he intends to put it in the air, this would be the down. Ball at the uh, six-yard line. It's second and goal from there. Movement on the Iowa State line. Now they're saying Minnesota jump. And it looks like it's going to go against the Golden Gophers. That'll push them back five. And now it makes it really difficult as they're going to be pushed back to the 12 or 13-yard line. And it'll be second and goal from the 13. Drobzak was the guy that moved for the Golden Gophers. And he flinched just a little bit. Boy, as an offensive lineman, and those who have played the position are aware, once you do, you just you can't find a place to hide. You sit as still as you possibly can, but they usually see that movement as an offensive lineman. So a break for the Cyclones. It's now second and goal from the 13. Dockner back to throw. Quick drop. Across the middle it goes. Caught by Gators. Gators catches it on his belly at the five-yard line. It'll be third and goal from there. Shane was right behind Gators to make the stop. So far, Gators has been the only target for Schaffner. Why not? When you got a guy of that quality, you might as well go to him. He threw to you all the time at Cleveland. But when they didn't, I was begging. <laughs> Third and goal from the five. Dockner wants to throw away. Whistles. Blow the play dead. Let's see what this is all about. Is it delay of game? Delay of game against the Golden Gophers. Boy, they've stabbed themselves a little bit here with two offensive penalties. And that's one that you just simply can't have. The play, it looked like, got in in plenty of time as they rotate players in and out trying to give Schaffner the play. But you've got to get your people up and get the playoff. The 25-second clock in a situation like this should give you plenty of time to execute that play. Third goal again, this time, though, from the 10. Schaffner heaves it up into the end zone. Tinglehoff, the son of Mick Tinglehoff of the Minnesota Vikings. Tinglehoff goes into the corner and makes the touchdown. Well, his daddy's got to be pleased with this one. Three-step drop. It's called the alley-oop. Tinglehoff simply takes it to the end line. Nice catch. Very nice catch as he beats Andrew Bugs, the defensive back. And that's a play that it's simply a one-on-one. -on -one. Bugs lines up to the inside. He let Tinglehoff off to the outside. And a good throw by Schaffner. On for the extra point, Berglund, it's up and it's good. And it's 7-3 to three in favor of the Golden Gophers. Hey, let's take a look at that play again. Schaffner with a nice touch. And remember, this is going into a breeze of about 15 miles per hour. Schaffner laid it up perfectly. Well, it's a play that Schaffner right now knows where he's going with the ball because of the coverage on Tanglehop. You can see Bugs is beaten to the outside. Now, this is a good throw and an excellent job of concentrating on the football by Tanglehop. Right from the start, Bugs lines up inside. Tinglehoff knows he simply releases to the outside, runs directly to that second flag in the end zone. And it's just up to the quarterback to make sure the ball gets up and over the back and gives that receiver a chance to catch it. And that time, it certainly did. So the crowd here in Ames quieted for the moment. Tinglehoff, one of those possession-type receivers for the Golden Gophers. Boy, his dad was a terrific player with the Vikings. You talk about a guy that was durable. You could count on each and every game. You knew he was going to be there. And Tinglehoff played for many, many years with the Vikes. 
kicking off for Minnesota. Not the same guy that uh, kicks their extra points for them. Matter of fact, he's a guy that we don't even have listed. Yeah, we don't have listed. Number 47, and we... Maybe it's a secret weapon of the Minnesota Golden Gophers. Aaron Pipecorn will kick off for Minnesota. Brent Berglund. Berglund is the guy that normally does their kicking chores. They're kicking into the wind, though. Thibodeau has it at the 15. Uh, goes up to the 35-yard line. A gain of 20 on the kickoff. So Iowa State again starts with pretty good field position. Iowa State certainly has had that luxury so far this afternoon. They trail those 7 to 3. Isn't it amazing on a college campus how quiet 48,000 people can be <laughs> when the opposition scores? Yeah, absolutely. It's amazing. It's not that way in the National Football League. I'm not sure as to why, but boy, this place got quiet quickly. Sounds like a golf course here. If Bryant cuts back, pick up of a couple of tough yards. Mike Sunvold was there defensively for the Golden Gophers. Well, we've talked so much about those running backs, and yet they haven't been the story this afternoon. No, but I think before we're done, we'll see more of Thompson and Blaze Bryant. You can see number 21 replaced Joe Henderson last year. Big enough that he can break some tackles. He's got very good speed. One of the fastest members of the Cyclone team. And Minnes he'll be the guy this year. Minnesota showing everybody up on the line of scrimmage. Just three guys back. Now they break back, and Oberg rolls out to throw. He's got time. He's got his receiver. Lot felt he again with a catch. Across midfield, down to the Minnesota 45-yard line. Doug Evans was there defensively for Minnesota. I tell you, this is a good throw by Brett Oberg. As he gets to the outside, you can see the Cyclone seal inside. And Glotfeld, he had got behind the corner. And it looked like for a minute that Oberg might decide to throw the ball deep. Evans beaten to the outside. Glotfeld, with excellent hands. He really he's, he came here as a, as a quarterback. Played some in his first year. So he always gives you the possibility from the wide receiver position of throwing the football. And I'll bet you anything before this thing is over, if not this game, certainly the year, Glotfeld will throw one of the double passes or the reverse pass of some sort. No doubt about it. Also on the baseball team here at ISU. Another pass across the middle. Glotfeld again. Sean Lumpkin made the stop from his free safety position, but just as Schaffner had gone to Gators, now it's Oberg and Glotfeld. And once a quarterback gets confidence in a receiver, he tends to look for that receiver, sometimes more than he should. In this case, uh-uh. Glotfeld -uh. hooks inside. Most times you won't see quarterbacks that can make the transition to a wide receiver because they don't like to get hit, but Glotfeld, a good one. Should be the last play of the first quarter. Clock ticking down with five seconds to go. And Minnesota comes storming across the line of scrimmage. Minnesota's claiming it was Iowa State who moved, but Iowa State's saying, no, it was Minnesota. I'll let the officials decide. Oberg is clapping, so it must be against Minnesota. Yes, it is. Offsides against the Golden Gophers. Well, that's a third really tough penalty. It didn't end up hurting them on that touchdown drive, but now it's first and five from the 25. And that stops the clock in the first quarter with three seconds to go. So one more chance with the win for Brett Ober. And first and five, if you want to take a crack of throwing one in the end zone, this would be the time to do it with the win. Oberg brings him up to the line of scrimmage. Let's see if we make a good coordinator. Oh, up the middle, the draw play. <laughs> a little more conservative here at Iowa State, at least early on. That's why we're up here. Eddie Miles and John Leverins were there to make the stop, and that'll do it for the first quarter as Brian has stopped after a gain of two, uh, but that brings up second and four. We'll start the second quarter in just a moment. Iowa State trailing by State with the ball at the 24-yard line, second and four. Dave, when you played in the wind, a wind like this, is it really a factor, 10, 15 miles an hour? I, I, I don't think so. Uh, we were down on the field before the game, and uh, I played in wind much more substantial than this, and you can throw the ball to a certain extent. I don't think you'll see if the wind remains as it is 
either passing offense effective. Jim Walden coming into this year, he'd like to throw the ball a little bit more. He's an innovative guy. Uh, gets his players ready to play. I think every head coach to a certain degree in college, uh, not everyone, but certainly most of them would like to run it. But here's a guy that I think if he had his druthers would go back and throw the ball a few times. Jim Walden named a head coach here. Now in his third year at Iowa State. Three and eight his first year, five and six last year. They look to be over the 500 mark this season. He's one of the more entertaining coaches in the industry. Fumble. Oberg might have fell on his own uh, fumbled snap from center from Keith Sims, and he did. Iowa State gets it back, fortunately for them. Sims, again, we remind you that he is converted from the left guard position over to center, but he really likes the center position, and Walden says, I don't think I've ever had a player adjust to a new position as easily as Keith Sims has to center. Well, they've gone from first and five, where you really can run anything you'd like, to third and five, almost certainly a passing situation. scrimmage I didn't see anybody move for Iowa State again I think that's Minnesota now the Golden Gophers again claiming that someone from Iowa State maybe moved a hand I'll tell you what they're doing Oberg is is terrific at changing the cadence and utilizing that long snap count and that's the second time he's got the Gophers offside also little subtleties the center can perform you squeeze the football you move your head just a little bit and it'll be up to the officiating crew to pick it up if in fact that's what Iowa State is doing Take a look at it, and you can see Oberg, just with that hesitation, just bounces his head just enough that it can throw everybody offside. They might have to have a measurement now to see if it's close enough for the first time. Nope, they've marked it first down. Oberg also a little bit concerned with Bob Coughlin, the defensive tackle of Minnesota, coming in and hitting him anyway. In fact, he went over to the official and warmed him about that. Those quarterbacks don't like to get hit, <laughs> and, and certainly not when the whistle's blown. <laughs> Again, they come offside. That time, I think, though, Iowa State might have moved. I don't know. I, I, wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't bank on that. Eddie Miles was the guy that jumped in across the line of scrimmage. Nope, it's offside again against the Golden Gophers. Well, how is this for an offense? Well, I tell you, it makes the offensive coordinator's job that much easier because he's picking up five yards at a crack with very, very safe plays. You can see Brett Oberg kneel down. The Golden Gopher is going to have to get a rope and tie it around those defensive linemen's neck, and nobody can move until one guy moves. That's the third time it's been someone different each time. It's so tough to, to stand in there and you think, oh, why, why are they moving? Yeah, you can watch the ball. Don't go to the ball snap. But it, when that quarterback, you get used to the rhythm of the quarterback's voice and the cadence he's gone on for the first quarter, and then he changes. That's what you have. The pitch back to Bryant. Big hole. Cuts in. He snorkels, and they stop him at the wall. Lumpkin stopped him just shy of the goal line. Wow, what a run from Bryant. Well, this is just simply getting out flank. You can see Minnesota with an inside stunt. And what you'll see now is Blaze Bryant with plenty of folks ahead of him. Good job cutting inside. Excellent blocks up front. And he almost gets into the end zone. It looked like Minnesota with a defensive stunt inside and a perfectly called play, the power pitch and Blaze Bryant with a lot of turf to move. Minnesota wants to talk about it. They call timeout. It'll be first and goal for the Cyclones. Right near the goal line. The ball's on the half yard line. Minnesota calls their first timeout. Let's watch it again and watch the block by number 31, Paul Thibodeau. And number 54, Trent Van Hoosen. There's the good block and you can see the inside cut. That's just having the right play call for the right defense. Yeah, I think uh, Minnesota was certainly expecting some sort of a pass there on first and five. Iowa State looking to take the lead. Bryant scored a couple of touchdowns for them last week. Oberg also scored on the ground, a 13-yard run. You know, running backs, even the great ones, really like to look up and see folks in their own jerseys, that same color in front of him. And that time, Thibodeau out in front, Van Hoosen. Kind of nice to see those big fellows out and running as fast as they can, looking for somebody to hit. 13.43 left to go in the first half. It's 7-3, Minnesota on top, but Iowa State certainly threatening. First and goal, ball at the half-yard line.
Minnesota had to take time out to regroup after that long run by Bryant. And he ran for 213 yards in his debut last week. That's the most ever for a first-time player in the Big A Conference. And Jim Walden said he kept it very basic. Didn't want to burden him with too many different plays and sets. And 213 yards on a few plays, pretty impressive. Bryant now the lone back. Oberg barks the signal. To Bryant. Touchdown. Plays Bryant with his third touchdown of the year. This one from a half yard. And Iowa State regains the lead. Look at the lean that Blaze Bryant has. Very, very tough to stop a back, especially a good size back. But he's got that forward lean. And Blaze Bryant expecting to score. Now, you'll love this play. Shudak, who had one block. Look at this. Shudak, who had one block last week, will try for the extra point. But they do. They, they move, of course, now to kick the conventional point. But they also, at times, give the ability to do something crazy on the extra point. It's up and it's good. No problem. And it's a three-point lead for the Cyclones. 13.40 left to go in the first half. Iowa State has regained the lead. His kickoffs into the end zone, but now he'll be kicking into that light breeze, and we'll see if he can do it again. Gators again. The burner will be back there for Minnesota. He's the deep back. Sean Lumpkin also back there along with Fred Foggy. And this is a kick because of the wind. You're probably not going to be able to drive into the end zone, but you want to get enough height that your guys can get out of cover, especially when you have return men like Gators. Again, look at the formation for Iowa State. Now they split out. They, they are not immune to trying an onside kick anytime, anywhere. at the 10. Gators hit and has swarmed under at the 25. Jim Duran was there to stop it defensively for Iowa State. And if you're wondering, is Jim Duran the son of Jim Duran from the mid-50s? Yes, he is, the All-America wide receiver. You can see Bryant Bryce right Bryant over the middle. He powers into the end zone behind Gene Williams and Trent Van Hoosen. Keith Sims, the center with a good block. Put him behind some pretty big offensive linemen. And you look at defensively for Minnesota, they, like Iowa State, are small up front. So that's certainly the play to go, to go with there. 13-33 left to go first half. Thompson this time has some room. Casey Martinez on the stop. He comes up from his strong safety position. Well, this is the kind of play that Minnesota would like to see. It's the counter trade that you've seen the Redskins run so effectively. And boy, Thompson sees this hole here and watch him pick up those feet. He's got to get to the secondary, which he does. Martinez comes up with a fine tackle. Thompson's the kind of guy that you see him, he looks so big, you wouldn't expect him to be that quick, but he's got great speed. This time, Schaffner wants to throw on second and short. He goes deep. That's going to be pass interference. No question about it. That's Dave Eater, the senior out of Elgin, Illinois. He had no idea where the football was, and he just ran into the intended receiver. Got a good job of pass protection up front, and Eater, had he just known where the ball was, as you mentioned, that would have had to have been a perfect throw to be com complete. Now, one of the differences in college football as opposed to the National Football League, that will not be marked from the spot of the infraction. They will take it back, mark off the yardage from the line of scrimmage. So if you're beaten for a touchdown, in other words, in college, it makes sense to grab the guy, prevent the touchdown, and give yourself uh, defensively another chance to line up and play. Yeah, because that would have been a huge penalty against Iowa State. I'm not sure he would have caught the ball had the defender just been able to get out of the way. It was a ball thrown a little bit short. Got a 15-yard penalty marked off, and it brings the ball inside Iowa State territory at the 49. Again, Thompson, a little more room to run. 
Dave Eater there along with Tim Baker after a pickup of four. Thompson's the kind of guy that can make his own room. When he comes through that hole, it picks those legs up. He's got the high knee action. Very, very tough to tackle. Iowa State's going to have to do a good job of making sure they keep people after Daryl Thompson every play. He's kind of like Dickerson in that you can hold him to a two or three yard gain for a quarter and a half, and all of a sudden he breaks the big one off. Minnesota must see something on the left side they like. They had tried Thompson to the right to no avail, and now they're running him to the left. Schaffner wants to run with it. He tucks it under, and he is shy of the first down. Marcus Robertson out of bounds, just short of the first down marker. They'll mark it down at the 41-yard line. I tell you, Schaffner wound up running, but he didn't want to. The receivers in that particular play went the wrong way. They had the drag action to the right side. The receivers had gone to the left side. Schaffner got outside. Watch with the receivers. Everybody will come to the left side of the field. Schaffner's out there, and all he sees is Mark... Bozic. There is no receivers upfield whatsoever. Box top at 11.57 to go. Third down play, third and two from the 41. Now a timeout again called by Minnesota. Their second of this first half. Obviously, Schaffner seeing something defensively he didn't like from Iowa State, so he calls a timeout. Probably wants to make sure those receivers are going to come to the right side. Hey, <laughs> hey, coach, I get out there. There's nobody out there for me to throw the ball to. As you look at the Big 8 race this year, Dave, uh, certainly you've got three or four teams in there that have a real legit shot at winning it. Colorado looks very good early on, as does the Oklahoma Sooners, and Nebraska is always going to be there. Oklahoma State struggled a little bit in their first week against Tulsa, but uh, they feel like they've got a team that can contend. How do you look at it? Well, I think, first of all, when you talk about the Big 8 Conference, you have to start with Nebraska and or Oklahoma. Oklahoma's going to be very, very tough. Nebraska is picked by some to be the top two or three teams, one of them in the country. I think Colorado has a chance to win the Big 8 Conference this year if they can stay healthy. They're not as deep as Nebraska nor Oklahoma. Prime Network brings you exclusive coverage of Big 8 football this fall. You'll see 11 games in all featuring Colorado, Nebraska, Oklahoma State, Oklahoma, Missouri, Iowa State, Kansas, and Kansas State. Catch all the action of Big 8 football this fall on Prime Network. Schaffner now gets through talking to his head coach, John Gutekunst, who, quite frankly, yes, is feeling some pressure at Minnesota after a year of 2-7-2 and two last year. The media putting a lot of pressure on Gutekunst to win and win early. Right now his team trails by three. So here's where you have the advantage. You can see what they did last year. Not that bad for a team that didn't fare so well in the wins and loss column, but here's where you have the advantage of Daryl Thompson. Schaffner handed it off. He said, wait, he didn't hand it off, but now we have whistles to stop the play. All of a sudden, everybody stopped, but Schaffner still had the football. Well, it's going to be against Minnesota. I, I don't think it's delay of game, but they may have moved a little bit before the ball was snapped. That's the call. And that's... Those penalties are absolutely killing Minnesota, and you have to relate that to that first game where they really aren't on the same page. Most coaches will tell you that the biggest improvement a team can make is between games one and two. Well, for Minnesota, this is game one. And these are the kinds of penalties that you hope you can iron out in two days, but as you mentioned, boy, they come back to kill you if you have too many of them, and Minnesota's had more than their share in the first half. Well, they had some penalties early on that didn't stop a touchdown drive, but then they certainly helped Iowa State in their touchdown drive, and now they've just really hurt themselves as it's now third and long, third and seven. That changes things dramatically. Schaffner wants to pass, getting some pressure. The screen is set. Look at that, fighting through the uh, tackles. But Thompson gets out of it and picks up the first down. Charles Vondra was the guy that fought through all the tackles, but he couldn't stop Thompson. Casey Martinez finally did. Well, Darrell Thompson, primarily a runner in this system, but he's had 38 catches in his career. And these are the kind of catches that if you can get him the football and let him take over that great athletic ability, he's going to make a lot of people miss. Just kind of lopes and jumps over people and tries to run over people. Thompson of big, big weapon in the Minnesota offense, and that's the kind of play that you have to get in the football. Big play for Thompson to keep the Minnesota drive alive at the 30-yard line. Again, to give to Thompson, this time he slips. Right at the line of scrimmage, Vondra was there to stop him, but really, Thompson stopped himself. I'll tell you what's impressive about those stats. 
Decide, of course, from the 3,300 yards. Gosh, that's a Minnesota career. Look at the average mm -hmm. per try. 5.2 yards every time he runs the football. That includes a bad year for him last year where he gained under 1,000 yards. He was hurt for some of that year, and he was disappointed. Prototype NFL-type runner. Schaffner wants to throw. Well, the whole day, and then all of a sudden, he runs into... Dean, I Dean Ollers. Dean Ollers was there defensively. I think Ollers was just in the right place at the right time. Well, you can see protection pretty good. I'm not sure that's not Larry Radigan, to tell you the truth, coming off of LaMotta. Tough to see if it was Radigan or Ollers, yeah. but... 46 or 48. Good pressure. Looked like Ollers coming in from the uh, defensive end position. That's just kind of a, a play where the quarterback runs to you. Oh, it's third and 13 on the 33-yard line. More importantly, that might have dropped them out of field goal range. We'll see. Schaffner again with a lot of time. Now he decides to toss it up to his up back. That's Patrick Cummings. Cummings close to a first down. Dave Eater made the stop very near the first down yardage. I don't think they have it, though. It's going to bring up a fourth down and one. Now a decision to make. Do you go for the tying field goal or... Go ahead and try to run it here. I think you've got to go for it. You see a good job of Schopner standing in the pocket and then having enough presence to realize that he's got to get rid of the ball before he crosses the line. Cummings with a nice job of going for that first down marker. And I think when you're big and strong up front with a back like Daryl Thompson, you've got to go for a first down. And they're going to do it. Fourth and one at the 21. Thompson has it easily. Thompson goes around the right side and not stopped until Casey Martinez got him after a pickup of about two or three. There's a situation where you don't want to outguess yourself. You line up on the wishbone. Thompson's the guy. You know it. Iowa State knows it. And you don't care. You don't want to say, well, they're, they're keen on Daryl Thompson. Maybe we should give it to somebody else. No, when a guy that big and strong is the horse, give him the ball. And that time, John Goodenkoos doing just that. So a first down at the 19-yard line. That says one of two things. Either you have great faith in your offensive line or not as much faith in your field goal kicker. Again, the fake to Thompson, the quick toss out to the near side. Completed to the 11-yard line, Marcus Robertson on the stop. Gerald Moore was the guy that made the catch. The third string flanker. And although I'm sure Gerald Moore are happy to have the chance to catch the ball, he's probably wishing that Schaffner would get it down just a little bit. Took a pretty good pop from Marcus Robertson right in the middle of his back. Second and short, second and two now for the Golden Gophers. Ball resting at the 11-yard line. Again, Schaffner on the fake to throw. Just overthrows his intended receiver. Daryl Thompson was looking for the football, but just out of his reach. Here's a play that Schaffner knows he's got Thompson wide open, and he can't get the football ready to throw quick enough. You can see him as a quarterback. You'll see the top of your screen, number 39, runs right by Marcus Robertson. Getting the ball right now. Just a little bit late. you got to put a little more air under the ball, let Thompson run to the corner, make the catch. And that will come with constant work. What do you do here? Third and two. Give it to Thompson. Boy, look at him push through. He was stopped at the line of scrimmage and forced his way through, maybe enough for the first down. Mike Shane was there, but that was a, a battle of wills. I'll tell you what, it was a battle of headaches, too. Mike Shane and Daryl Thompson kind of eye each other as they get up. Shane doing what good linebackers do, stepping up, filling the hole, and here comes 220 pounds of Daryl Thompson. There's a guy that's uh, an all Big A performer, we mentioned doesn't have great size nor speed, but what a tremendous heart and just the ability to be in the right place. And that's usually where the ball is. First and goal now at the eight yard line for Minnesota. They trail by three. Mike Shane puts the mouthpiece back in. He's ready to go. Thompson coming around the left side. A pickup of two or three on the play. Don Edwards along with Tim Baker there defensively for the Cyclones. Brings up second and goal, ball at the five. 
It's been a pretty good drive by Minnesota. Mm -hmm. Certainly has a long drive. 7.20 left to go here in the first half. Cyclones lead 10 to 7. Hope you're enjoying things this afternoon on the Prime Network. Again, they give the, this time, they give to Seton Brino. Seton Brino checking in for Daryl Thompson. Casey Martinez stops him short of the goal line. Travis Block also there. Seton Brino, a sophomore out of Philadelphia. He was redshirted last year with leg injuries. Now Thompson back in. First and goal from the one-yard line. Minnesota doing a good job running to the left, as we mentioned, behind Lamada and Lennon. Like a wishbone for Minnesota. To give to Thompson. Touchdown. Touchdown for Minnesota. And they regain the lead. This has been certainly one of those games that's gone back and forth. Well, the opponents of Minnesota are going to be able to pick up a couple of things. One, Thompson's the guy. And two, they love to run to the left. No way to stop the guy that big once he gets the leverage that he had very low to the ground. Watch how Thompson, once he sees the goal line, lowers his body. Just makes it virtually impossible to stop him at the line of scrimmage. And a good job by Minnesota on the drive. Berglund with the extra point. It's good. And with 6.29 left to go in the first half, the Golden Gophers lead the Cyclones of Iowa State 14 to 10. Minnesota, it took seven minutes and four seconds. Thompson with a one-yard run to cap things off. And Minnesota leads Iowa State 14 to 10. Both teams, the last drive, really impressive. Minnesota taking it virtually the length of the field. Iowa State, the previous drive, coming with big plays. You like the mix of the pass and the run. You got Daryl Thompson very much involved in the offense, and Blaze Bryant, on the other hand, certainly a key component in the Iowa State drive. Ball fell off the kicking tee. Again, it's Aaron Pipecorn kicking for the University of Minnesota. Aaron's going to have to get his name on the, on the old <laughs> yeah. gopher list, it's isn't like, he? Hey, coach, I'm, I'm actually playing. Can you uh, tell the uh, sports information director about it so that he can uh, relay the information on to the media? <laughs> Aaron Pipecorn with his name not on the media list. Try to reload. Kickoff will go into the end zone. Oh. And out of the end zone. After that kick, I'd go right now. Yeah. Hey, coach, <laughs> that was me. <laughs> hey, go over, show him your jersey. Oh, I'm number 47, Aaron Pipecorn. Thank you. <laughs> 629 left to go in the first half. Cyclones go back on the attack. This is pretty much what we expected, an offensive game. Both teams not as good defensively as they are offensively. Certainly they don't have as many tools on the defensive side of the ball as they do offensively. Plays Bryant the lone back. And it's Brett Overt. Oberg with the give to Bryant. Nice move at the line of scrimmage and a pickup of six on the play. Bryant looking to be stopped at the line of scrimmage. Coglin finally corralled him after a pickup of six. Brian doing what good backs do, and that's having the ability to pick the right hole. You line up in the one-back system, you give the ball to the back some four or five yards behind the line of scrimmage, and you allow him to decide as to where he wants to run. It's important, though, in a system like that, that all the offensive people sustain their blocks as long as possible. That time, pretty good job by Iowa State. Second and fourth, the 26. This time, the fake. And now Oberg loses the football and gets it back. Coming in defensively there was Eddie Miles to knock the football loose. Oberg fell on it, though. And a loss of a couple on the play back to the 24-yard line where it's going to be third and six. Cyclones going for the home run that time, and Oberg just didn't have time to allow the pattern to develop. Had Glotfeldy going down deep right through the middle of the defense. The one thing you can't have happen to play like that is quick pressure from the outside. Pretty good so far for Iowa State on third down. Oberg again, this time rolling out to his right. What a drilled pass. Beautiful reception by Troy Moore. 
He threw that ball in the only place that it probably would not have been picked off. Well, they've utilized this particular concept many times. And a good job by Oberg stopping and letting Moore slide back to the inside. And Troy Moore doing a fine job of making sure he gets his hands underneath the pass to allow that official the look to see that he catches the ball. Dave, if he doesn't throw it low there, Leverance probably picks it off and maybe goes the other way for six. First down again, Oberg back to throw. Look at all the much time he has. Now he runs with the football. Now he goes down with the football. But a pickup of about seven on the play before Mike Sunvold comes from behind and gets him. It's kind of funny because they teach quarterbacks to stand in the pocket and allow things to develop, but everybody that stands is yelling, run! You can see it right from the start that Oberg, right now, he's got a lot of daylight doing what he should do, though. Stay in there, make sure your receivers have a chance to get open, to slide from zone to zone. And Brett Oberg's a good enough athlete that he can pull it down and gain some yards when he has to. Ball goes up to the 43, where it's second and three. Iowa State doing a good job on first down so far in this drive. To Bryant, first oh, yeah. down and more. Cross midfield to the Minnesota 48-yard line. Max Stevens, the linebacker, the senior out of Akron, Ohio. A guy that Ohio State wanted, but as a tight end, not a linebacker. So That's what I'm talking about, picking and choosing the right hole. Good job of Blaze Bryant jumping back inside. And when you're that big at 200 pounds and you can make decisions that quickly, you stand a pretty good chance to be a good player in this league. Another first down for Iowa State, now inside Minnesota territory. They give to the first back through. That's Ron Wilkinson. Leverins the stop up the middle. Pick up of about two or three on the play. This crowd is a very quiet crowd. I'm glad you brought that up because I was, I was thinking my headset wasn't working. That's a nice day in Ames. People probably just happy to be outside. Having a good time. You know, the Cyclones are down by three right now, but moving. Well, they love to tailgate here. Mm -hmm. Two or three hours before the game, they were roasting those dogs. It was they? interesting. 45 minutes before the game, there was hardly a soul in the stands. They were all out there uh, having hot dogs. dogs. And yeah, yeah, they were having a good time out in the parking lot. Oh, a nice misdirection by Oberg. Now the pass on the sideline, now fumbled. Will they call that a reception and a fumble or an incomplete pass? I think they've called it a fumble. They have a reception and a fumble, and Minnesota has the football. Gladfelt, he said he never really had a handle on it. Max Stevens was the guy that picked it up. But fortunately, we don't have to look at instant replay, which is good news for college football fans, but to be able to have an idea, does Gladfelt have the ball? It looked like he caught the ball and actually turned to make a move inside before cocking it up. Good job by the Minnesota defense of creating the turnover. And again, I'm so very happy that college football has not adopted the instant replay <laughs> rule for that's, fear of four-hour games. That's really bogged down the NFL game, but uh, officials seem to now become more comfortable with it. And they just want to get that play right. And for the most part, they do. Yeah, that's the amazing thing. We have the advantage of looking at it on replay. Most time, the officials are accurate anyway. Gators has it. Now looking for some room to run. Didn't find much as Phil Navarro came up from his middle linebacker position to hit him hard, and Gators still on the carpet. Getting up slowly. Boy, Navarro had a clean shot. Boy, if you're a linebacker, man, that's what you like. And if you're a wide receiver, man, that's what you don't like. <laughs> I think Gators actually saw Navarro coming. May have got need in the side because the first thing you do as a receiver after you catch the football you start looking for guys that don't wear the same color jersey that you do and in Gators case not the biggest guy in the world but 185 pounds when linebackers arrive you've got to do what he did and get out I think he caught a knee to the side actually before he went to the turf Drew Goodman down on the sidelines. Drew, it's good to hear from you. Yeah, did you forget about me, guys, huh? <laughs> hey, do you know, I didn't realize this. Dave Logan's former coach used to coach at Iowa State. Dave, did you realize that? Yes, I did. Yeah, Pop Warner from 1895 to 1898 was the coach here. And a uh, very famous guy and naturally coached at Iowa State. Pretty good ball game, huh? Very good. All right. So far, very good. Thanks, Drew. Just wanted to say hello. Yeah, all right. Good to hear from you. Finally found you. 
Schaffner back to throw. Look at how much time he has. Boy, when you get that kind of time, it's pretty easy to find your receivers staying inbounds with the catch. Pat Tinglehoff, Charles Vondra making the stop, but another first down for Minnesota. They're driving after the turnover for Iowa State. I don't know if we'll see it, but it looked like Pat Tinglehoff may have stepped out of bounds with his right foot before he caught the ball, which, if that's the case, that pass reception would not have caught. Don't think we'll have a chance to look at it, but give a lot of credit to the Minnesota line up front for allowing Schaffner a tremendous amount of time to look down the field. Minnesota moving to Thompson, a draw play. Thompson stopped after a pickup of four or five. Phil Navarro again on the stop. That moves the ball inside the 20, down to the 18 or 19, let's call it 19-yard line. With 142 and the clock moving, remember, Minnesota has but one timeout. They had to waste a couple earlier in this half. The clock will become a factor now. Minnesota with second and seven from the 19. Navarro makes the stop along with Jeff Bauer. And the clock's still moving with 1.12 to go. Minnesota has one timeout. They're not using it here. It's third down. They got plenty of time. That might have been a case where Daryl Thompson simply outthought himself. Had a pretty good lane to the outside. He's a cutback runner by nature, I think, and may have dipped back inside a little bit too quick. Now the clock will be stopped as one of the Iowa State football players uh, inadvertently kicked the pigskin. So with 58 seconds to go in the first half, the clock has stopped. Now they'll get things going again. Third and two from the 14. And Thompson, he has enough for the first down down to the 10 yard line before Randy Byrne could wrestle him down. Now, if you're the Golden Gophers, you either want to call your timeout, the clock will stop as the chains are moved, or get your players ready and get them up with 45 seconds to go. You need to call two plays in the huddle in case you're tackled inbounds. You still have that one timeout, but you don't want to let a, a lot of time slip away unused. Clock moving now with 35 seconds to go in the half. First and goal from the 10. Schaffner over the middle. Hit as soon as the ball got there. Hit by Dave Eater, the intended receiver, Pat Tingleoff, but he was racked. That'll stop the clock with 25 seconds to go in the half. This a tough throw as Iowa State did a good job of dropping people into the passing lanes. You can see the ball and Eater arrived simultaneously with Tinglehoff. That would have been a, an excellent catch had he been able to come down with it. That'll rattle your teeth a little bit and it brings up second and goal from the 10. Somehow, someway, I think, before this series is over, Thompson has to get his hands on the football. Quick slant over the middle, and it's a, is it a touchdown? It looks like he dove into the end zone, but they're calling it down at the one. And now Minnesota takes their last time out of the first half. 16 seconds to go. Now it's third and goal from the one. That was a key play for, uh, for Iowa State to stop them at the goal line. It looks like a blown coverage by Iowa State. You can see the blitz from the outside, and Kevin Grant is all by himself in the slot. Does he get across from that? vantage points certainly look like he clearly was in the end zone but the officials have ruled him down I, uh, Minnesota will now have a third down and about a foot to go you wonder what will they do here if they run it and are not successful they won't have time to get their field goal unit out onto the field with no timeouts left if they pass it they might not complete that so it's a tough decision for the Golden Gophers yeah, I don't think they can pass it I, in my estimation this is not going to be that tough. You either quarterback sneak it or you give it to Daryl Thompson. You figure those people up front can control the line of scrimmage for you. Most coaches will tell you that if they've got a sound running game and they can't pick up a half a yard, then they shouldn't be running the football. Thompson in the backfield again. They use the wishbone. Third and goal from the one. Two Thompson. Stop! makes a defensive play of the first half. And now a whistle and officials timeout. One of the Minnesota players is injured. I'll tell you who it is. It's Daryl Thompson. And I think Thompson sustained a leg injury on the great play inside by the Iowa State defense. And Dean that, Ollers. That's going to allow the Minnesota field goal unit to get out onto the field. Well, the Iowa State fans are very upset. 
because they think Daryl Thompson's faking an injury. I'll tell you what happens. Ollers gets to Thompson before Thompson can prepare himself. Very tough to see from that particular angle. But Ollers actually gets to Thompson right as he plants that leg. And let's hope that Daryl Thompson is not seriously injured. Well, we'll see in the second half if he comes out and runs the football. That'll be a key story of this game. If he doesn't look like he's faking it at all right now, he looks to be hurt. In fact, he needs help to get off the football field. What a blow that would be for Minnesota this year. Daryl Thompson limps off. I tell you, Oller's a terrific job of penetrating. And again, he got to Daryl Thompson. I think before Thompson had a chance to look up from the ball and see anybody coming. And that's really how you sustain a serious injury. So Bergman, with time running out, kicks the field goal and it's good. Plus the displeasure of the Iowa State crowd. They thought time should have run out in the first half. Minnesota allowed to tack on three more. Minnesota leads 17 to 10. Iowa State unhappy with that last field goal by Brent Berglund. Well, it'll be interesting to see if Daryl Thompson comes back out and runs. Now he's walking off the field a little bit better. I think you'll see Thompson running the football in the second half. Iowa State feeling like Thompson had faked it to allow the field goal unit to get on for the Golden Gophers. We'll be back to Cyclone Stadium in Ames in just a moment. This is back. Last time he kicked it through the end zone. We'll see what happens again. The football falls off the tee. New rule in college football this year, Dave, and it's going to have, I think, an impact on the college game, and that is the uh, place kickers are not allowed to use the tee on either the extra points or the field goals. It's going to make it uh, good for the guys that can continue on and have a professional career because, obviously, in the National Football League, you cannot use the tee. You must kick off the surface. But I think certainly it's going to be more difficult. In this case, we may never get the kickoff because of the wind. It's going to be more difficult for kickers in the collegiate ranks to, to change the way they've kicked the last few years. Ball blows off the tee again. That will bring in a guy to hold it now on the tee to make sure it doesn't happen. They always let you do it, try it twice, and if not then, then they bring in a guy to hold it. See, without the tee, obviously, you don't get the ball up as quickly. Mm -hmm. You tend to line drive the football. You'll probably see more block kicks this year in college football. You'll probably see more missed kicks this year. Shudak had an extra point block just last week. Kick goes. Thibodeau with it at the goal line. Thibodeau looking for some room. Stop shy of the 20 at the 18-yard line. Thibodeau stopped at the 18-yard line. That's where the Cyclones will start offensively. Let me reset the offense for you. For Iowa State, Brett Oberg, the quarterback. The outstanding one, number 21. Blaze Bryant, one of the best running backs to come into Iowa State, taking over for Joe Henderson, who was great for them just a year ago. Mike Bush, the tight end, is yet to have his hands on the football, but he's one of the premier tight ends in the country, and it's all anchored on the front line by Keith Sims, the center. Ober goes back to Bryant, goes around the far side, pickup of only one or two. Sunbold there quickly to make the stop. It'll be second and eight at the 21. Defensively for Minnesota, Leverins again, the linebacker, the outstanding one, a senior. I tell you how tough John Leverins is. When he was a freshman, he broke his thumb, and being a pre-med student, he watched the operation. That's tough. <laughs> yeah, that's one way to describe it. <laughs> Second ball, or second down, seven yards to go. The ball on the 23-yard line. Fumble. Uh, maybe Blaze Bryant got it. Maybe Minnesota. I think Blaze Bryant fell on it in the backfield. That's the third time today that Oberg has had trouble hanging on to the football. Twice the uh, snap from center Keith Sims has been a little bit off target. And we mentioned early Minnesota, the team that early had a problems hanging on to the football and just with the snap count itself but Fred Oberg doesn't appear like he ever came away with the football that's got to be a bad feeling as a quarterback to turn around and look at your halfback with nothing in your hands. Is that a case where the quarterback comes away too quickly or the center doesn't get it there fast enough? Tough to tell. Oberg now looks for room to run. He's looking for the angle to try to get the first down and he's got it. It looks like he went out of bounds right at the 30 yard line 
senior Brett Oberg. Now, quarterbacks that can run really become a bonus in an offense, and Oberg doesn't like what he sees. Actually, the pass protection breaks down, and now he's given it everything he has, knows where that first down marker is. And tough to see with somebody in front of us if he actually places that left foot on the 30-yard line. But that's where the ball was marked, and a nice play of making something out of nothing by Brett Ober. That's good speed when you can run by a cornerback, Derek Fisher. Fred Foggy finally was the guy to force him out of bounds after a pickup of 12 on the play. It'll be first and 10 from the 30. Bryant now wheels out, has time to throw across the middle. That's his tight end, Mike Bush. Near midfield at the 47-yard line. Eddie Miles in on the stop, along with Fred Foggy. First time that Bush has had his hands on the football. Bush, a second-team All-Big A performer last year at 27 catches, doesn't have great speed but he has the ability to find the open spot and certainly presents a big target. And after the catch, you can see he is a tough man to pull down. Good Bush. baseball player. Yeah, hit over 400 this year for the Cyclones. First down again for Iowa State. He looks like a guy that you would not want to throw the fastball to. Now, 6'5", 252 pounds. Give him that deuce. Looking for some room. Darts back inside. Picks up two or three right at midfield at the 50-yard line. Skeeter Ockrey was there defensively, along with Eddie Miles. Plays Bryant, truly a cutback runner. He's a guy that is always looking to break it back against the grain. And sometimes you're going to be better off just heading on up in there and getting with all the guys in the red shirts and the massive bodies and just trying to gain three or four yards. Second down, ball at midfield, seven yards to go for the Cyclones. They started this drive at the 19, now Oberg calls a timeout. Oberg not comfortable with the play call, so Oberg takes a timeout with 12-14 left to go here in the third quarter, and the Cyclones trailing by seven. I think that may have been a case where you just didn't get the club up to the line of scrimmage. Once they got up there, he had five seconds to get the ball snap, can't make any reads, and certainly can't change a play in that length of time, and Brett Oberg decides to call a timeout and start over. Jim Walden in his third year here at Iowa State after spending nine years at Washington State, took his team to the 81 Holiday Bowl. How respected is he by his peers? Twice voted the Pac-10 Coach of the Year at both 81 and 83. Walden also a guy on the uh, banquet circuit that is very popular. He has twice been asked to be the NCAA speaker. Drew Goodman down on the sidelines. Okay, Dave. A couple of injuries on the Minnesota sideline. One we were aware of, one we were not. Chris Gators got hit in the back, has a bruised back, will return for the University of Minnesota. Anthony Thompson, they were pretty hush-hush on the sideline as far as giving away information, but I found Thompson. He was bouncing around like he was fine, and I believe he will be back in the football game, but they said he was legitimately hurt, and as I said, when I looked at him coming off, it did look like he was bruised up, but fortunately for him, he is fine. Back yeah. up your way. Walden wasn't too happy, though, with the way that... Uh Minnesota was allowed to kick that field goal with time running out. Well, we'll look for Darrell Thompson here in the second half when Minnesota gets their hands on the football. In motion goes Thibodeau. The give to Bryant stopped in the backfield. Eddie Miles right there to stop him cold. Loss of three. Back to the 47-yard line. It'll bring up third and ten. Loss of three, loss of helmet. <laughs> That's a play where Eddie Miles from the weak side is coming down, and you'll see him from the left-hand side of the screen. He gets there on the delay, actually unblocked. The counter tray takes a lot of time to develop in the backfield. You've got to get solid blocking on the weak side if it's going to work, and that time a good job by the Golden Gophers penetrated. Passing situation for Oberg. The quick shooter. The push, he fumbles a football, and Minnesota has it. Mike Bush had the ball stripped away as he dove for the first down, and Minnesota picks it up. John Leverins was there to make a big play defensively for Minnesota, and Frank Jackson was there to fall on it. See, these are the kind of plays that, that make coaches gray-headed before their time. You've got the perfect play, you have the execution, the quarterback right on the money, 
The tight end with the breakoff route catches it, and after he gets tackled, he fumbles the football. Jackson with an outstanding defensive play for Minnesota, and now they come on the attack, and yes, Daryl Thompson is in there. The lone back for the Golden Gophers. Schaffner back to throw it. Now he's chased out of the pocket, and he picks up four or five on the play. Randy Byrne there to stop him. Byrne coming off a knee surgery that he suffered last year late in the season. Three-yard pickup. It'll be second and seven. Ball at the 45-yard line of Minnesota. 17-10 our score. The Golden Gophers with a seven-point lead over the Cyclones. Dave Armstrong, Dave Logan, and Drew Goodman with you on Prime Network. I'm glad you're along. that these guys have been working on for years. Schaffner and Hopewell, both high school teammates at Muller High. I'll tell you what happened. Dave Eater, the cornerback, simply goes to sleep, and I don't think, believe, the ball would be delivered to Hopewell two or three yards behind him. He looked like he was starting to break inside, anticipating Schaffner throwing to the middle of the field. Hopewell got behind him, and the big fellow doesn't have great speed, but clearly in the open. The extra point is good. And that makes our score. It's good. Minnesota 24, the Cyclones 10. And there is a hush through Cyclone Stadium. A 14-point lead now for the Golden Gophers. And we'll be back. Has dug themselves a hole now. A big pass play to Paul Hopewell from his high school teammate, Scott Schaffner. Schaffner, a guy that many advertised as not having a good arm. Boy, he's certainly shown a good wing here this afternoon. It's looked pretty good, and you have to credit the Minnesota offensive line for the most part giving him time to throw. And again, they've been going after Dave Eater on the left side. Eater with the pass interference call earlier in the first half, and that time giving up the big touchdown catch to Hopewell. Ten forty-four left to go in the third quarter. Gophers have opened up a two-touchdown advantage now. You mentioned uh, teammates in high school. Mulder High School, pretty good football program in Ohio. Kickoff will go through the end zone. Block Belty catches it, but he goes out of the end zone, and Iowa State will get it. Let's take another look. As Scott Schaffner goes back to pass, he's looking, you can see, on the far side of the field. All of a sudden, he comes near side, and he sees Hopewell wide open. Dave Eater was the man beaten defensively for Iowa State. And again, as you pointed out, Dave, I don't think he was expecting it to come to that side. A good play from Schaffner to look one way and pass another. So the Cyclones come back on the attack. Ryan has it, finds a hole up the middle. He's drilled by Ron Getz. But he picks up seven. Down to Drew Goodman with a special guest. Or two special guests. You think this weather's beautiful? Well, for most of us it is. But how'd you like to hang out in uh, these costumes? This is Cy on my right. How you doing? Cy's doing well. I have to communicate for him. And on my <laughs> left is Clone. Cy's been around since 1955. I don't know if the student uh, involved has been around since 55. Clone, you were adopted uh, this year. Let me get my mic in there. Talk, talk to me. <laughs> Yeah, very articulate. See what, see what uh, hard-earned money of parents are going to? This is what you're getting for your college education these days. Dave, back up your way. <laughs> very insightful interview there. Thank you, Drew. Keep it up, Drew. We're going to put you in that costume. <laughs> That's where I belong. <laughs> Brian, again, finding some more room to run as Sunbold and Lumpkin make the stop, but not after a first down for Iowa State up to the 37-yard line. Iowa State down a couple of touchdowns, plenty of time to get back in the game, and I think smart by Jim Walden not to abandon the running game totally and start to throw the football every time. You've got a very good runner. You've got time to get back in this thing if you can continue to run the football well. Wilkinson stopped right at the line of scrimmage by Ron Getz. Iowa 
State sticking to their game plan, only down by a couple of touchdowns. And remember, in the fourth quarter, they'll have the wind at their back. Second down, nine yards to go. Ball to 37. Bryant went in motion. Now they look across the middle. That quick slant pass that's worked for them all afternoon long. The pass to Troy Moore. Derek Fisher there defensively for Minnesota across midfield into Minnesota territory again down to the 49. You know, they were talking, Dave, earlier about the turnovers. Two turnovers so far for Iowa State. Both times it's really hurt them. Well, turnovers, coaches will tell you, universally will kill you. You just can't, at least most teams, can't come back and win games when you turn the football over more than your opponent. Good scheme of things. You put a man in motion, you freeze the corner, you make him make a decision as to who he wants to cover. That time, hitting the slant pattern, they've been successful with that two or three times. There was a play that went nowhere. That was uh, one that somebody missed the communication, either Oberg or Bryant. A loss of about three. What happened? Well, it, it looks like both of them missed. Oberg turns and looks for the ISO left. Bryant is running the ISO right. Oberg trying to jump on the pile to make sure the football doesn't squirt out. That's a bad feeling as a quarterback. When you get the snap, you turn, you don't see anybody, and then you look <laughs> the other way. Here's your halfback standing. Equally as bad for the back as he stands and waits for the ball, and the quarterback's gone the other way. No fun. Lucky to lose only two on the play. Second and 12. Ball back in Iowa State side of the field. Obert tripped up. He goes down. Ron Getz comes in on the blitz from his linebacker position to make the stop. I think what you're seeing now, Iowa State has gone to a short passing game, and they're trying to, trying to avoid the, the pass rush of the Minnesota Golden Gophers. But so far, Minnesota here in the second half has been able to put pretty good pressure on Ober. He escaped once and made a big play running, but he hasn't had time to stand in that pocket and wait for those receivers to come clean. Well, Iowa State going in the wrong direction now, third and 14. There's the pass on the wing to Brian. It eludes one tackler, eludes another. And he gets it down to the 43 yard line. Not enough for the first down. It'll bring up a fourth down. But now you got a situation where Iowa State just might go for it. Bob Coughlin in on the stop along with Derek Fisher. Well, as we said before, it's the same play. Blaze Bryant, top of your screen in motion. Now, Oberg has a choice. Depending on what the corner does, this time the corner takes the slant. Bryant is the guy. Of course, he's got the ability to make a lot of folks miss as he gets hogtied around the neck. Fourth down, and Iowa State is going to go for it. Now you're down by 14. The ball's at the 43. Watch for the delayed count, and Oberg trying to draw Minnesota offsides again. They got to get it underway, and he has to call timeout. The clock, the 25, 30-second clock, had wound down to just one, and Oberg had to take a timeout before he was cause of the delay of game. And so here's where Oberg goes to the sideline, and he said, hey, coach, I, I've got to have my plays quicker. I don't have time to get the snap count, tell everybody what they want to do, and most importantly, get to the line of scrimmage and look over the defense where I can change the play if I want him. Jim Walton's got to get those plays in quicker. That, that's a tough, tough task. Now forget fans, coming up next week on Prime Network, the Missouri Tigers will host the Miami Hurricanes. Dave and I will be there to bring it to you from Barrett Field in Columbia, Missouri. It comes your way Saturday night at 12.30 Central, then again Sunday morning at 10 o'clock Central, right here on Prime Network. Drew Goodman, enjoying that sunshine down on the sidelines. Actually, you've probably been wondering where I've been hanging out most of the day. It's uh, right here inside my helmet. It's a pretty nice dome, isn't it? By the way, uh, you talk about weight room strength and, and the advent of people going in the weight room more than when perhaps even when Dave played only a few years ago. Brent Herbel, who is the punter for Minnesota, is one of the strongest players on the team. He bench presses over 375 pounds. And he says, I want to get up to 400 pounds. Unusual, a player 5'11", 185 pounds, benches that much as a punter. And they say punters aren't really part of the team. I don't think that's true anymore. Back up your way. Drew, the rumor is here that you had your golf clubs in the back of that thing. Well, that rumor is accurate. <laughs> R rumor also has it we're taking that to Des Moines. Catch the <laughs> how do you hit a ball off Astro Turf? Well, you know how far you're going to hit it here. Drew, can you hit it out of the stadium? Bryant goes for it on fourth down, but snuffed. Max Stevens was the guy that stopped him. And Iowa State does not convert on fourth down, and they hand Minnesota the ball. 
Well, when you go for it on fourth down in any situation, you leave yourself open to second guessers. And I would imagine Jim Waldman will hear a few after the game about the play selection on fourth down and four. Tried to ISO to the left side. Blaze Bryant has been successfully running that way, at least at times. But Minnesota doing a good job of playing tough up front and nowhere near the first down. Toffner brings the Golden Gophers back on the attack. Now the give to Thompson up the middle. We've got a flag on the play. A gain of about four. We'll see what the flag's all about. Don Edwards and Phil Navarro were there defensively for the Cyclones. Movement on the Minnesota line. <laughs> there goes Drew. Drew, come back. Uh, he, he's got that tea time to make. <laughs> <laughs> he's got that airplane to catch. <laughs> So, a uh, big loss there after a gain of three, the five-yard penalty it really makes it a, a loss of eight, and it's first and 15. And again, those penalties rear their ugly head. Look at Schaffner. That's, I mean, that's outstanding. Schaffner has really just thrown the ball all over the long, short. He's pretty much had it his way. Play to Thompson. He's got some room now trying to get outside, and he does. <laughs> you hear the Iowa State yeah. fans booing, not booing that particular play with the flag down, but booing the fact that Daryl Thompson is back and seemingly quite fit after that last play of the first half when he was injured. And Thompson really running well to the outside. Now he limps a little bit. I think that's maybe a little bit... Uh, for the fans show a clipping penalty will go against the Golden Gophers and again another penalty will set Minnesota back I'll tell you what happens with great backs they make cuts that are unexpected and from an offensive vantage point you're blocking guys that you think are a good block and all of a sudden he dips to the outside watch his feet right here this is 220 pounds he has the ability to pick those feet up and looks like a guy that's uh, 180 pounds very very quick for a kid that size it's going to come back a clipping call, but uh, Daryl Thompson appears to be just fine. The clipping penalty takes it back to the 35-yard line. You can see him talking to Kevin Grant, number 19, the wide receiver, I believe, that was called. Thompson said, hey, that's okay. Appreciate the effort. Backs like to see wide receivers downfield and throw on that extra block to break them. Thompson comes out for a rest. Schaffner brings him up to the line of scrimmage. First and 16 from their own 35. Schaffner has time right off the shoulder pads of his intended receiver. David Schumacher had it right in his sights but couldn't hang on. I believe it's Kevin Grant again. You'll see Grant trying to turn up field. You're right. And it pops out. Grant's had kind of a tough series. He gets called for the clip and then tries to gain two or three extra yards but does so without the most important Four. thing. And that, of course, the football. That might have been a play where Schaffner was trying to give Grant some confidence, and he might have taken some away. Second and 16. There they go. Long again. And it goes out of bounds. Pat Tinglehoff was uh, the intended receiver. It was out of his reach. And now back to Drew Goodman in our reach. Somewhat. By the way, uh, any of you guys seen my wedge? Did somebody take it out of my hotel room this morning? Uh, more importantly, David Shoemaker, the tight end, transfer from Oklahoma. And he said that the linebacking core, Brian Bosworth, Dante Jones, when he was at Oklahoma a couple years ago, the linebacking core the Gophers have right now, every bit is good, if not better. Interesting statement. Yes, yeah, Leverins is an outstanding one, though, for the Golden Gophers. Third and 16, big play for Iowa State's defense, and look at him come. Melvin Coleman comes up from his linebacker position on the blitz. Well, Coleman, Coleman from the outside just beats John Melander around the corner. Coming on the blitz, the offensive lineman didn't get out in time, and really never had a chance because Coleman was so quick on the snap, anticipated the snap beautifully and was around the corner before Melander had a chance to block it. Herbal off the side of his foot, punting it away from 
Marcus Robertson and now it gets a definite Minnesota bounce and goes inside the 20 down to the 18 with five minutes left to go in the third quarter it's Minnesota 24 Iowa State 10 we'll be back to Ames Iowa in just a moment at Cyclone Stadium Iowa State goes on the attack inside their own 20 the pass away. Glockfelty catches it and goes right down at the 33-yard line. A pickup of 14 on the play and first down for Iowa State. Nice job by Oberg as he avoids the rush. Does a good job of skating to the outside. Eddie Miles with the opportunity to get him. And a good catch, making sure you have the football. John Glockfelty, who has shown fine hands here this afternoon. Miles has really played well as the outside linebacker for the Gophers. Had a chance for a big play there, but Oberg able to spin away. Oberg will most likely be called on now to throw the football a little bit more than he did in the first half. Bryant keeps Minnesota honest a little bit with a run up the right side, a pickup of four. I think right now what Jim Walden is saying, he's going to attempt to maybe punch one in this quarter, but really utilize the wind in the fourth quarter. That's where you'll see, I think, Iowa State throw the football. Both quarterbacks have had exceptional days, at least statistically. Oberg has dropped the ball a couple of times, but certainly his pass completion ratio is <laughs> really outstanding. You can't ask for much more than 11 of 12. The yardage hasn't been quite as long as Schaffner, but he's certainly been accurate. Receivers hate to see that flag, especially after catches like this. Oberg looks off the safety. That's a terrific catch. Fred Foggy makes a play on the ball and is actually there in time to make the interception, but I don't think he figured Mike Bush could make that catch. Bush at 6'5", able to reach up and snag it out of the air, but it all goes for naught. Brings up third and seven from the 36-yard line. of John Leverens and gets out of bounds to stop the clock with 3.48 left to go in the third quarter. Cyclones are moving. You can see Brett Oberg is much more comfortable this year in the starting assignment. He was there every game last year, but after only four weeks of practice was named the starter. Got good composure. He realizes the down and distance. And right now, he knows he's headed for that sideline and looking for that red marker. And you see him tip right over it and out of bounds. First and 10 for Iowa State at the 43-yard line. And the Bryant trying to go around the first side, cuts back in. Now he comes the other way. Still no room either way. Picks up about three, though, before Peter Ockery gets him down. And now a whistle, a late hit, perhaps by Minnesota. A flag on the play. He might tack on a few more. A face mask called against the Golden Gophers. Minnesota really shooting themselves in the foot here this afternoon with those penalties. They lead by 14, yes, but if not for those penalties, they would really be comfortable. A five-yard penalty walked off against Minnesota, and that's going to bring up first down all over again, and just two yards to go. Here's something you can run a play on with first and two on the Minnesota 49. In motion goes Bryant. Or gets again, away again from the rush. Now, we're going to perhaps have a flag. No, what they ruled there was that the Iowa State receiver had no chance to catch the football. Fred Foggy was the man that got tangled up with the Iowa State receiver. Well, again, Oberg buying himself some time. He knows right where the line of scrimmage is. He easily could have made the first down, but at first and two, you want to go for the home run. Definitely some contact to the outside. Tough to see from that angle as to what would have been called. Frank Jackson involved in the coverage, but you're just not going to get a call like that unless the receiver does have a chance to make the catch, and that time Williams didn't. Tyron Williams was streaking down the sideline, but... 
The official ruled that he would not have caught up with the football. Second and two. Bryant gets the first down. Across the 45, down to the 43. Skeeter Autry on the stop for Minnesota. That's why you can make a play like Oberg attempted to on first down, because second and two, you're still in business. Even if you don't make it third down and short, you've got a pretty good chance to pick up the first down. Iowa State moving. A little bit of help from the Minnesota defense with the penalty. They have first and ten now. The ball at the 44-yard line. Pulls him offside. Jumping across there again, Bob Coughlin. Coughlin, boy, he wants to get out of that starting gate in a hurry. That's the second time that Coughlin's been drawn offside. And that brings up a first and five. A lot easier to make it on four downs from five yards and it is from ten. I'll tell you what, a lot easier to select the play that you're going to use, two first and five. Advantage clearly to the offense. You can throw the ball deep. You can do just about anything as an offensive coordinator. You can take a chance against the win of picking up a quick score. Important drive for the Cyclones in that with two scores behind, you don't want to waste a lot more time in getting within a touchdown. And Bryant goes in motion. Overt looking across the middle. Now he wants to run with it. He's not going to find much room. A pickup of two or three. Coughlin there to make the stop. Oberg really had no one to throw to. All his receivers were covered. Sent three guys deep, and I think that may have been the play that they told Brett Oberg, hey, if you get somebody deep, go ahead and take it. If not, see what you can do. become a factor too later on here if Iowa State can get back in this thing as the Cyclones have used two of their three allotted timeouts in this half. Here comes Bryant. He'll be short of the first down. That'll bring up a third down in about two. And again, Blaze Bryant is going to be a good back in the Big A Conference. Junior this year, the junior college transfer, but there are going to be times that he can't cut back. I've never seen Blaze Bryant play at Golden West JC in California, but I can tell you what he is. He's a definite cutback runner, and you're going to have to learn from time to time that even if you don't get what you like up front, you've got to honk it up in there and pick up positive yards. Third and three at the 38. Iowa State trying to keep this drive alive. It started back at the 18. Bryant again. There you go. Just what you said, he's a coachable anyway, isn't he? <laughs> I tell you, that's lowering your shoulders and picking up good yardage. Very, very close to the first down markers. We might have to measure this. If not, it's going to bring up. Nope, it's fourth down. I'm not even going to take a look at it. Fourth down and about a half yard. And again, Iowa State's got to go for it here. Down 14. With the clock ticking towards the end of the third quarter. The last fourth down try came in fourth and five. Blaze Bryant over to the left side. We'll see what Walden calls. Bryant again over the left side. I think he just barely got it. He fell over the line of scrimmage to pick up the first down and keep Iowa State's drive going. Max Stevens made the stop for Minnesota. That's the end, or close to the end, of the uh, third quarter. 35 seconds to go. Somebody blew off a gun, but uh, not, <laughs> not the one that uh, ends the third quarter. Hope they point it up here. <laughs> Cycle fans really haven't had a lot to cheer for in, in recent years here at Ames, but I think Jim Walden is the guy to really get things turned around. Mm -hmm. Did a pretty good job last year, and as you mentioned, looking to break 500 this year. It's a pivotal game for both of these teams as far as that goes. Enough for the first down, though, a pickup of 13 on the play down to the 20. Play action fake, Glotfeldy in the seam. He just sits down so Oberg can find him. Does a good job of protecting the football, which you have to do in traffic. Glotfeldy's turned into a nice possession receiver. That's going to do it for the third quarter. Iowa State's going to let the clock tick out. Now they want the win at their back. So after three quarters of play, Minnesota with a two touchdown advantage over Iowa State. It's 24 to 10. And we'll be back in just a moment. Goodman with you as Prime Network brings you Minnesota and Iowa State. Drew Goodman with the word on Brett Oberg. 
year make for Brett Oberg. Usually when a guy transfers in from a junior college, he tries to get in time for spring ball. It wasn't the case a year ago with Oberg. He got here in the fall. He was practicing about three, three and a half weeks when the starter, the incumbent, Derek DeGenero, went down. Well, he didn't even know his offensive lineman that well, so in the huddle, he had to call him by number. He said, hey, 69, you got to block on the outside a little bit better for me. I think a year later, he knows them all. First name, middle name, last name. He's doing a pretty good job. It certainly is. First and 10 for the Cyclones at the 20-yard line. The Cyclones start their attack here in the fourth quarter with the wind at their back the rest of the way. The pitch back to Bryant. There you go. Wrestled out of bounds and a flag looks like a face mask. Leverins got in and put a little leverage on the face mask. Good job of the power toss that time. You see Blaze Bryant excited about it. Makes a dip to the inside, which will freeze the inside pursuit, and Bryant will be able to scoot around to the outside. Just little subtleties you can pick up with very good running backs, and Blaze Bryant is that. Face mask against Minnesota. That's going to take the ball down to the seven-yard line if they rule it a five-yard penalty. That's down to the six-yard line. Oberg comes in from the sideline. He's got the play he wants. First and goal from the six. Now Bush comes in motion and Wilkinson comes into the eye. The pitch back to Bryant. Again. job of staying on top of Minnesota at the point of attack and Blaze Bryant untouched to the end zone. Shudak will attempt the extra point. Good snap. Good hold. Good. And with 14.51 left to go in the ball game, the Cyclones have pulled it within seven. Our score, the Minnesota Golden Gophers 24, Iowa State 17. We'll be back to Cyclone Stadium in Ames. Cheering his troops on, they have pulled it within seven of Minnesota here early on in the fourth quarter. And there you see the huddled formation. Jeff Shudak looking out now, they'll fan out. Minnesota relaxes just a little bit. They have all kinds of onside plays in their repertoire. This one will go into the end zone down there and Minnesota will start their attack at the 20-yard line. Well, it'll be up to the Iowa State defense now, Dave, to see if they can stop the Golden Gophers and give the offense a chance to get back on the field. Well, they've got the crowd back in the game. They've got the win with them. And certainly equally as important for the Minnesota offense to try to establish something to take this crowd back out. And if nothing else, to gain field position. You don't want your punter to have to kick in the win deep in your own territory. So if you don't score, that's fine, but at least if you're Minnesota, you want to move the ball, get two or three first downs, and gain field position. Iowa State's players trying to cheer this crowd on. Faulkner goes to back to pass right away. Scrambling around. The Thompson out of his hand. Incomplete, second and ten. It's amazing what momentum will do in a football game. That's a play you just have to make. If you're Daryl Thompson, gift and kid, but you've got to make a catch like that at first down, yardage in front of him, wide open. And Shop to do a good job of stepping out. Thompson just couldn't catch it. Second and ten from the 20-yard uh, line for Minnesota. And now it looks like Schaffner might be hurt just a little bit. Schaffner favoring his knee, and that'll bring in Markel Fleetwood, a freshman out of Decatur, Georgia. Freshman is thrown into the fire. You don't think they'll run the ball in this play, do you? 
<laughs> Thompson alone back. The motion is coming. They give on the reverse, coming around the near side. And a big pickup for Minnesota, finally stopped by Phil Navarro, but not until they get to the 43-yard line. Kevin Grant comes around, and Grant, the guy that was called for the clip and dropped one earlier, makes a big play here. He had to figure that they'd run the football with a freshman quarterback in his first play, but they do so, and yet come up with a big play. Grant, on the reverse, does a good job of reading his blocks and certainly threw off the Iowa State defense. Excellent call by Minnesota. Now to Thompson. Right side. A little bit of running room, a pickup of five before Navarro can stop him. Here's where Iowa State defensively has really got to stand up and take charge. Daryl Thompson's had a, an average day for him, not good in terms of what he's done in the past, but Iowa State defensively now, they've allowed the Minnesota club out from their own end zone, and if they, they've given a field advantage. You want to make sure you stop Minnesota with a little under 14 minutes to go from scoring. Second and five from the Minnesota 48. down inside Cyclone territory down to the 42 yard line Marcus Robertson stopped him there but some good hard running by Daryl Thompson and again they've taken the crowd out of it here in Ames I think any head coach would tell you that if you have a lead in the fourth quarter the one factor that you would love to enjoy is a big strong running back that can pick up tough yards Daryl Thompson's a guy that's proven over his career of having the ability to pick up tough yardage so far, Minnesota has not missed a step since the freshman Markel Fleetwood came in. Again, when you have a guy like Thompson, though, running it, it makes the quarterback's job easy. Thompson goes around for 11 yards and another first down to the 31. Markel Fleetwood will be a good quarterback in time, but this is easy enough. All you have to figure out is where Daryl Thompson's going to be. Just let the big fella run up in there. You can see him running behind excellent offensive blocking. The Rozak doing a good job up front. Minnesota's offensive line really establishes themselves this drive. And Iowa State has got to tighten up that run defense, especially with the young quarterback in. You don't think they're going to throw the ball. Minnesota now close to field goal territory. There goes Thompson again. Not stopped until a pickup uh, down to the 18-yard line. Tim Baker finally got it. Minnesota folks has talked, and they've talked about this extra gear that Thompson has when he sees daylight. There it is. One of the few times we've seen it this afternoon, but I mean, he saw that hole, and I mean, he just changed gears right in mid-stride. Minnesota definitely now in field goal range at the 17. Field goal would certainly dampen the hopes of Iowa State, who's pulled to within seven. Thompson again finds a hole around right side after there was nothing doing at the line of scrimmage. A pickup of seven on the play down to the 10 again. It's Tim Baker on the stop. <laughs> Daryl Thompson says, get me out of here. Let <laughs> me have a blow. That's about five consecutive times. Does a good job of cutting back. And then once he does, he squares those shoulders, takes on the secondary. And the 220 is going to be able to run over most safeties in college football. Not quite a first down. Second and two, ball at the nine. Zeppelino goes into the line pick up enough for the first down. It'll be close. I think he got it. Navarro and Reberg were there defensively for Iowa State. Boy, a touchdown here would really be tough on the Cyclones after coming back with that early touchdown here to start the fourth quarter. Well, they had the crowd back in it. Now all of a sudden, Minnesota just jams it down their throat again. It makes it tough because defensively they had them pinned down. Mm -hmm. They had a chance to hold them down and gain great field advantage and so far, they've been unable to do that. They've already given up the field advantage, but they haven't been able to stop him from running the football. Key play on second and 10 from the 20. Kevin Grant goes around on the reverse to take it near midfield. They've been running it well ever since. Fleetwood wants to throw. Run it. Now he's going to run it. Tucks it under. It's down to about the three. Travis Block ran him down at about the three-yard line, maybe the two. Good call because you give your young quarterback the option of running the football. And Fleetwood doing a good job of making that decision. Gets outside, doesn't like what he sees. 
Gets right behind J.J. Lennon, and off we go. The ball actually looked like it came loose, but Minnesota was able to recover the fumble. Going to be a good quarterback in this time. Schofter comes back in. Fleetwood goes out. Schofter did a good job running the offense for Minnesota. Schofter back in. Same play, though, that gives to Thompson. Stopped short of the goal line by Tim Baker and Phil Navarro. Schaffner's not going to be able to go, I don't think. Schaffner again limps over to the sideline, and now he will come out. Gutekunst said, no, you're not looking real good. We're going to put Fleetwood back in there. So it's third and goal at the two. Numbers don't look to be real accurate. We'll get a double check for you. Thompson looking for pay dirt. He's got it. Thompson dives in for the touchdown. Pretty fair drive in the first game, don't you think? I would say so. <laughs> Against the win, on the road. This team didn't win a game last year away from the Metrodome. They're going to win a few this year with Darrell Thompson running the football the way he did that last drive. That's what a senior back, a guy that is being billed as an All-American, that's what he has to do when the going gets tough, and he did it. Berglund for the extra point. It's up. It hits the crossbar. It's no good. Well, that gives the Cyclones a glimmer of hope, and it might change the momentum somewhat. We'll find out. With 10.41 left to go in the ballgame, the Gophers now with a 30-17 to 17 lead over Iowa State. State now trailing by 13 with 10.41 left to go in the ballgame. Drew Goodman on the sidelines. Okay, Dave, you get the feeling right now that finally the Minnesota size advantage on the offensive line really starting to wear down Iowa State. It's about 30, 35 pounds a man. They average about 272 across the Minnesota Golden Gopher offensive front. And it's about 225, 230 the front four for Iowa State. By the way, trying to get an injury update from the Golden Gopher sideline, probably easier to get inside Fort Knox. They will not say a word about Gators. They won't say anything about Schaffner. Back up your way. All right, Schaffner uh, went down. Fleetwood came in, did a great job running the offense. Gators, we're not sure what's wrong with him. Earlier, he had a bruised back, and Daryl Thompson also hobbling. And now important for Iowa State to start thinking about putting up the football probably more than they'd like to. You've got time to score twice, but you don't want to take up an enormous amount of time to get your first score. Right around the 11 minute mark, you'd like to have a chance to score and then give your defense an opportunity where they're not forced to stop Minnesota in three downs so you can get the ball back. So you don't want to eat up a lot of time. You can run a little bit, but certainly you've got to throw the ball to get down the field to score. Paul Thibodeau and Troy Simon back deep for Iowa State. Thibodeau has it on the run at the 15. Stop down at the 31-yard line. There goes Scott Schaffner. Wants well, you to you have a banged-up knee. Don't like to see him ride in the wagon. Mm -mm. That's uh, that's not a good sign. Schaffner, who last year started the final seven games, he was hurt in 1987, so he's already had his red shirt here. Back to Drew Goodman with an update. Okay, you want to find out information, you go to the source. Just talk to Scott Schaffner as he was carted off. He is not injured at all. He has very bad cramps, very bad cramps. Down on the field, obviously, it's a lot hotter than it is perhaps up uh, in the sky where you guys are, but it's just cramps, so he could conceivably be back. All right, Thibodeau that's good hangs news. on to the football. That is good news. Uh, just a cramp, that's something that certainly he'll recover from. I'll tell you what, he may be the only guy in collegiate football history to ride off in the cart with cramps. <laughs> Interesting way to leave the field. <laughs> Looks like a guy who played in the U.S. Open tennis tournament, the way they were going down with cramps in that. 10.08 left to go in the ballgame. A 13-point lead for the Golden Gophers. Goldberg again has trouble at the snap. He fell on his own fumbled snap, but a loss of two, and that's going to bring up third and ten. Keith Sims and Brett Oberg have been working on the exchange for the next few days a number of times. Tough to see. Does Oberg pull out before the ball is snapped up? They'll have to talk about it, but the, the center exchange, obviously the most important part of any offensive play. Can't do anything without the ball. All right, third and nine, ball at the 31-yard line. 
Goldberg sends Bryan in motion. Quick look across the middle. Now to Bryan, wide open. Nice fake inside, and then Bryant with a late flag thrown down to the 40-yard line of Minnesota. Sean Lumpkin was there. And a flag thrown on top of it might have been a late hit. Goldberg does a good job of pumping the cornerback, falls off, and Blaze Bryant, who had been in motion, is able to duck behind the Minnesota defense. Pretty good versatile back. Did you see the personal foul being called against Minnesota? That will tack on 15 yards. Personal foul called against Minnesota. Another 15-yard penalty against the Golden Gophers. Boy, this is going to shove the ball all the way down to the 25-yard line. Well, don't count Iowa State out just yet. Lots of time on the clock with 9.20 to go. They get a score here pretty quickly. Anything can happen. Again, you saw Schaffner go off with those cramps. I don't know if he'll return today. They're going to probably go give him as many liquids as they can. But that means the quarterbacking chores will fall on the freshman Markel Fleetwood. First and 10 for Iowa State at the 25-yard line. Over. Scrambles around. Now they've got the screen set up. There's Bryant. Bryant on the fly. Pick up a 12. comes up with a ball at the 14 yard line. Plays Bryant as the one back will just go the opposite way of Brett Oberg and just kind of get lost. His design play to get Blaze Bryant the ball of course you want to get him the football as many ways as you possibly can to take advantage of what you're seeing right there. Great open field running. Anytime you see those offensive or defensive linemen coming in after the quarterback and you see two or three you can pretty well bet the screen is being set up somewhere. First and ten from the 14 for Iowa State. In the I formation, the pitch back to Ryan. He muscles ahead inside the 10 down to the nine yard line. A pickup of five before Skeeter Ockre and Ron Getz get him. I know somebody's going to have to get in the whirlpool after this game and plays Bryant. It's going to be the leading candidate for Iowa State. He's caught the ball. He's run the ball. He's been an excellent blocker. And I'm sure it wasn't like this in junior junior college at Golden West.